wokeness, I was going to ask you one, define wokeness as it pertains to Hollywood, because you talk a lot about how the, the idea of wokeness is nihilistic and anti-human. Yeah, well, I mean, wokeness is being awake to power structures yeah. and uh, oppressive power structures and to power dynamics in society and trying to reverse those power dynamics by empowering the people who have been at the mm -hmm. bottom. First of all, by first being aware uh, in, in, in what respects they're oppressed and then trying to reverse that. And that, that's what I think Hollywood is, is attempting to do, but they perceive certain groups to be on the wrong side of the political hierarchy and they're now trying to elevate them through awareness and then by giving them narratives that tell their story. Critical consciousness in a lot of ways. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think, I think in some respects it's, I, I think it's good. I mean, I like learning about uh, people and cultures that I was unfamiliar with before. And I like the fact that people who, who didn't get a chance to exhibit their talents because Hollywood is chauvinistic mm. and misogynistic and mm. they are the things that they claim to be fighting against, um, now get a chance to because Hollywood is so afraid mm. uh, of the woke mob, but it's still giving me a chance to see these these lifestyles and, and um, these types of people that I wouldn't have seen before. And now that's good, mm. that's good. So one of the things I disagreed a lot with the anti-woke people on back during like the Gamergate stuff 10 years ago, I was like, you know, look, Iron Man, Captain America, Thor, Marvel's big three, the first big movies they put out, it's three white dudes. I don't care if they're white. I don't care if they're white dudes. I like those movies. I'm a big fan of Marvel. I also have no problem with Shang-Chi having an, an uh, like they're doing a movie which is more Chinese American focused. And that's awesome. And there are a lot of people who are like, oh, they're getting woke because they're doing these, you know, multicultural or whatever, whatever stories. And I'm just like, they're trying to make, they're trying to, they made a show, they made money. Uh, one example, I guess, to go back to The Last of Us, it was, I think Bella Ramsey said it, maybe not, maybe the other young woman. If you don't like the show, don't watch it. Both and, of them said that. And I'm, I'm like, oh, yes, yeah. uh, the, it, absolutely. You don't have to watch it, like make something. I'm sick and tired of two things. People complaining that something like Disney is doing woke stuff. Like, I agree, I agree, but make stuff. We got a comic book here from uh, uh, the, the um, Van, Van Skyver. Ethan Van Skyver. Yeah, Ethan Van Skyver. Yep. Um, Eric T. July is making a, right. his own. They're yeah. making their own nice things, song. and that's the solution. Like, yeah. do stuff. And, uh, you know, so uh, that's that's mostly my, my, my point, right? Like, if Hollywood is going to wokeify things, I think it's totally fair to say, look, I don't like that they're doing this character in this way because it ruins the character for this reason. I don't like the hand-me-down element of, of the wokeness where it's like, we're going to do a black Spider-Man. And well, it's just kind of like, well, why don't you I don't, make... I don't like the, I don't like the, the collectivism in, in wokeism, right? Mm -hmm. I don't like the identification of groups by, by non-essentials, by things that, yeah. that don't really matter because there's no choice in the matter right so to, so to me the the only thing the thing that makes you human your rational faculty and your character your choices that you make in life that's what defines you as a human being that's what you have moral control over but to say to claim someone's identity is based on things they have no moral control over, no 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 choice right. in the matter is ridiculous and but, i but, hate that but it's it's also regressive i i, I know Very. people like to say it's the regressive left i'm like what i mean is if a society begins to understand that individuals are unique snowflakes, that yeah. a person, white, black, gay, straight, male, female, is going to have a unique perspective and experience, that's progress. And that's why we expanded civil rights. We said, you know what? <clears throat> we, we were wrong to assume that that Chinese guy was gonna come up to us and speak chi Chinese or Mandarin or whatever. In fact, the guy, the Asian guy walks up to you and then you're expecting it and he goes, what's up, dude, I'm from St. Louis. <laughs> and you're like, wow, individuals are all totally different. Yeah. It is regressive to start saying, we're gonna lump people based on race. And that's what woke people do. Yes. It is, it's, it's the opposite of progress. Yeah, identify them by things that are non-essential. That said, I'm, I'm gonna seemingly contradict myself, but I don't think I am. I, I'm amazed when I see commercials now, even commercials would say, with say African Americans who are in a home, a beautiful home, and they're advertising something, work. I'm, I'm amazed that wow, you know what? I I never saw that. You know, if I saw a suburban home, it was white people, and that 
does have a, an effect on yeah. the way in which you view yourself. And I think as much as I disdain those kinds of identities, it's also it's also important for people to see someone like them achieving something. I mean, that's I, the, the purpose of art is to, is to is, 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 is you know values, you have values, and you want to know that they're achievable. And sometimes it's easier to understand that when that person looks like you. I, I've tried. I've talked to a lot of uh, more right leaning people about this. I'm like, imagine your whole life, every billboard you saw, every TV show, every celebrity was black. You never saw your brother, your mother, your sister, or anyone from Unless he was dealing drugs yeah. or in a courtroom somewhere. Right. Or, like or, 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 or even when you have prominent figures, they're singing songs about how, about being degenerates. Yeah. I, my, I, like our generation, like my generation grew up listening to Tupac and Biggie and Bone Thugs and Harmony, which were cultures that I couldn't, li I couldn't understand. I could, I could listen to it. I could enjoy it as art. But it was not something speaking to my lived experience. So, so, so you know, I, I see people complain about stuff where it's like, you know, they're going to do a movie with a black female cop or something. And then people are like, oh, it's woke. They had to have a black woman. And I'm like, I have literally no problem whatsoever with them being like a white FBI, a, a man who's a white FBI agent. His partner is a black female mm -hmm. FBI agent. The issue I take with a lot of the stuff they're doing is they always try, they, it, they can't just say, we're going to have a strong female character, an Asian, a gay, a straight, or whatever. They'll be like, we'll do that, and then make a, make a white man who's really stupid yep. and, and to be mocked. Yeah, no, I, I hate that. Now, yeah. now, Rand was one of the, I think, the first people who, who wrote very strong female characters. I mean, if you read Atlas Shrugged, Dagny Taggart is basically the head of a railroad. She runs the railroad. She's an extremely formidable character, but in no respect does she diminish Francisco exactly. Danconia or John Galt or any of the other, uh, Hank Reardon. None of the other characters are diminished uh, by her stature. But nowadays I feel like, yeah, nowadays they're, 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 they're just turning the cliches, you know, they, yep. they, they, you know, at one time, you know, the black guy had to be the guy being brought into jail or committing a crime. Now the white guy's just a dumbass. It's uh, I was noticing that I've been watching. I started watching Will Trent and there's an actor named Jake McLaughlin who I, I love, I love Jake. He's a, uh, he's Jake's a fantastic, a he is, uh, he's a, uh, well, uh, like, yeah, I guess cause you were on Quantico and he was on Quantico, right? We were yeah. both on Quantico he, together. He's yeah. a great actor who does a good, like, uh, Cop, good uh, FBI agent, good this is military. Mil background. Yeah, he's he's got that role down right. And when they put him in Will Trent now, he's kind of goofy, and he might like like as an actor, he might enjoy it because it gives him the opportunity to stretch his uh, his acting skills, and he's acting differently than he has in past roles. But it does make it look more kind of buffoonish. Yeah, in a way. And yeah. in the past, that character wouldn't have been written like that. He would have been either written more stoic or it would have been written with more actual, like he would have had more personal responsibility and he wouldn't have been somebody who was just needed to be saved on a regular basis. So what was there? There was a TV show. I, I'm blanking on the name right now. It was based on The Bachelor. Do you remember this? Mm -mm. Okay, so there's a TV show that had about four seasons. It's a very well acted show based on The Bachelor. I think the executive producer was one of the producers of The Bachelor. Mm -hmm. So she she took a bunch of stories, I think, and then cobbled it into this cool series. But it, it was primary the the series primarily revolved around two of the producers mm -hmm. and some of the terrible things that they had to do to get reactions from people in, in the real world. It's sort of selling their souls, but it shows them living in a, a very misogynistic world and all the men are awful. There's not a single good man in the show yeah. and they're navigating this horror show of misogyny and having to become very steely, strong, intelligent predators in their own right in order to survive it. Now, I would have loved to have seen a show with very strong female characters like that who can get the job done without terrorizing men right. in the mm. process and i think it was it would have been it could have been possible you know who did it well was buffy the vampire slayer mm. back in the day um the, the x-files did it well the, the, well the x-files in fact they would be equals but in buffy the vampire slayer xander who is not a slayer and is essentially kind of a goofball is never talked down to by yeah. buffy or in any way ridiculed because he is not of the same level of competence as her because he is not a slayer it's not his role right he he plays a different role, but he's never treated with outward disrespect. And I would actually argue that Hollywood, more than anything, television has been doing strong female characters 
way like for 30 years like you know, you, 30 before the film before way movies. before sure. films uh castle uh stan akadik's character sure. uh, but she's they never, awesome too so i worked on castle but they never turn nathan fillion he, he plays a goofball but they make a point early on in the show that he can he can dead shot at a target at a range and he's a smart goofball he and may be a goofball but he's really smart it's